There's a lot of variety in knife design, whether it's thick, narrow, coarse, fine, but this medieval knife stands out a lot because of the little extra bit of guard it's got. Hey friends, Lauren back with you, and today we're going to talk about the Bauernwehr. That's right, it's a knife from Germany and Central Europe, mainly that's where it gets its name, Bauernwehr, and let's break it down, Bauer is farmer, and Wehr is defense. So this is the farmer's defense, also known as Ruger, but yeah, Bauernwehr, a very common name. The blade design could be different, but the most important thing, what they all have in common, as they all have a nagel. They all have this extra protective piece attached to the bolster on the knife. <gasps> so they have this extra piece here for protecting your hand. Where have we seen that before? Well, we've seen it in the Langsmesser, which has a nagel for extra hand protection. So this gives us a few little clues. We put that together. It's called the Farmer's Defense. It has a nagel to help protect your hand. Putting all that together, what does it mean? This is an everyday carry kind of knife. Now the blade shapes could be different. Some of them could be a bit narrower. This one has a clip point because I had this made by SGT Blades in Airdrie, Alberta. And I asked for a clip point. Lovely job that they did. We're going to ignore the phone making noise because I forgot to mute it and that's okay. So it's a tool, it's got a nice thick spine. You could really do a lot of work with this, but as the farmer's defense, if you you know, needed to protect yourself while you were traveling, it'd be great. And it's not just farmers. And when we say farmer, we don't mean the person necessarily in the field. Uh, we do mean, you know, the person running the, the farm, the farmer who's in charge could be the landowner might have this. A lot of craftspeople and uh, certainly middle class merchants might have this kind of knife as well. You need it to do a little bit of work. It's a tool, but you can also defend yourself. And we know because why would you have this nagel? This makes it very much a right-handed knife or if the nagel were on the other side, it would be a left-handed knife. So we know that it's there for a reason. It's got that self-defense purpose. And in the 15th and 16th century, we see a lot of these. Now, this isn't something that's carried over to modern knives, but what a cool idea. So yeah, the Bauernwehr. And we see that influence in the Messer, the Langs Messer, the long knife, knife construction for the handle, the same little hook on the back to help with your hand, and an eagle in here. Of course, the Langs Messer has an actual cross guard as well, whereas, you know, the Bauernwehr is an everyday knife. It doesn't necessarily need that, but it's got this extra little bit of protection. So we want to think more about a knife in historical context. Yeah, we know, oh, it could be a weapon, but we can see that it's not just an emergency weapon. It can be made with the intention of, I know I might need this as a weapon, so I'm going to have a feature on it that's going to help me so that if a blade comes in, I might be able to help defend against it because I've got an extra little bit there. So that's all I really wanted to do is show you my farmer's defense, my Bauernwehr, this really cool knife from SGT that they made for me. But um, yeah, if you search for Bauernwehr, you're gonna see a whole bunch of different designs. The, the common element is, you know, scales riveted through the tang. And of course we have a niggle. We have this piece nailed in here, this bar. Different shapes, could be a ring, could be a bar, could be curved, could be straight. This one, little heart shape. Medieval people actually like heart motifs. It's very common to be found on a lot of things. So seeing that on an eagle, that makes a lot of sense. So it's just a little extra decorative bit put onto a knife, but it has a very good defensive purpose. Now, quick tips. Not that I hope that anyone ever has to go out and use a knife to defend themselves, but if it's using it as a tool to chop at a piece of wood, yeah, sure, hammer grip, squeeze, you know, but if you had to fight with it, handshake grip, don't squeeze too tight, you want fluid motions, oh, I feel a bit like Doug Markaita. Um, you can tell I was watching Forge and Fire earlier, uh... So there we go, we've got this knife. You would be able to use it. You can stab, it's got 
the clip point sharpened edge in the back so you could do a false edge cut with it as well as a longer slash with it so yeah as a tool you can do a lot of stuff with it i've used it as a kitchen knife on occasion it works really well uh, but at the same time if a 15 late 15th century uh, craftsperson traveling around needed to defend themselves they've got a little bit of extra protection they could use this as a self-defense weapon absolutely so yeah so that's all i wanted to do i wanted to show you my power and i'd had it in videos before where i've just briefly shown it and maybe mentioned it but not really talked about its design and its features and what the name means and where it comes from so it's a little bit of a educational arms and armor video today to say Byron Bear, the farmer's defense, a really cool thing. Anyway, thanks very much, friends. Do remember, like, subscribe, and of course, comment, because your comments do help shape the content of the channel, and I really appreciate them. And um, that's this is Leo the Gamer Guy uh, on Discord. We were talking, you said, do something about knives and daggers. You know, there's lots of stuff about them. So, hey, I picked this. I said, let's talk about something that I really haven't gone into enough detail about on the channel, Byron Bear. All right, take care, friends. Stay safe and keep on swinging.